Hello, my friends. How you doing today? I am doing well. Well, I was doing okay until somebody came home, which I don't know who it was, and decided to go into the bathroom. And it's probably going to be in there for a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't break into song, because that sometimes happens when they go into the bathroom. And uh, hopefully they'll leave very quietly without making squeaks and whatever, because everything... I can hear everything on the camera, and, and, and that bothers me, okay? A car comes driving by outside, I hear it, okay? They flush the toilet, I hear it, okay? They're singing to themselves in the bathroom, I hear it. I just heard them come walking in, I hear it. So I hear all this stuff, and I don't want you guys to hear it, okay? They, they in there taking a dump, pinching a loaf, whatever is going on over there, I don't want you to hear it. I don't want, I, it's like they squeeze out a little fart, I don't want, I don't want them, I don't want you to hear it, okay? Because that's not none of your business. Um, so I got a package, I got a package in, uh, came in yesterday. And I didn't want to open it until I was ready to do a video. And uh, I wasn't ready to do a video yesterday. I just wasn't. Um, it does have to do with um, Full Moon Entertainment. Full, full Moon Features Entertainment. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a while, I have kind of been distanced myself from Full Moon. And you know the reason why. If you've watched my video about the wonderful, beautiful, awesome, amazing... Um, life-size one-on-one -on -one replica of the leech woman that I received and paid three bills for almost uh, 200 and change was shipping 280 possibly whatever was shipping um, you know that if you if you purchase one you know we all got screwed we all we all we all totally got screwed on that deal uh, I, I, I I put my, I brought my leech woman over so I can show you why I kind of stood away from full moon why I totally just like, I was like, you know what? I loved me some Ginger Dead Man. I love I love me some Puppet Master. But I, I got to stay away from Full Moon because I, I'm, I've lost trust in them. I, lo I, lost, I lost faith in their, in their products because I went back and forth for, for months with the, um, the people that run it, the, the customer service and uh, management. And I mean, I'm talking, I, I, I was, hey, unlike some companies, I was able to get to the higher ups. I was able, able to actually talk to the higher ups about the situation. And they were, when I finally got in touch with them, they were apologetic. They did actually uh, give me my money back. So I will give them the, the props for, for, for recon reconciling the situation. But I will tell you right now, this right here, this leech woman is not acceptable. Okay, when listen, this is not acceptable. Is this this is um, ridiculous? Okay, uh, it's made out of a foam that literally cracks. And I was gonna, I was actually going to redo this leech woman. Now, excuse her, uh, um, non wearing any clothes there, whatever. But um, even the clothes were unacceptable. This is terrible. This is a terrible piece of garbage. The fact that they actually put this in a box, charged somebody over two hundred dollars for it, and shipped it out to them with a smile on their face, and said, "Hey, this is your leech woman," and people were accepting it and smiling them, smiling back, and being like, "Yes, I finally got a leech woman for my collection of puppet master stuff." Um, is ridiculous. I gotta tell you right now, I, I am, I am, I was very dissatisfied. I was gonna try to fix her, but there, there is no help for her. This, there is no help. She is made out of strictly foam. This is all foam. And as I'm pinching it, look at that. Watch. As I'm pinching it, you can actually see the the paint and stuff just popping right off of her. Look at this. Look at that. So this is trash. Total trash. And um, please don't send me a message and say, oh, well, you think it's trash. Can you, can you just send it to me for free or whatever? No, I'm not going to send it for free. It, it, this, this, that's a... That's a symbol. That's that's a symbol of of bad bad craftsmanship. Bad people. Somebody that just had lack of care. Okay, and I like to use it as a um, a symbol of of what not to do. You know, I I love to keep symbols of what not to do. That that's that's a what not to do. What what a mess. What a mess. So with that said, I have a box here from Full Moon because yeah, uh, even though they their um, prop replica stuff may be garbage. Um, their movies are entertaining to me, are very entertaining to me. Now, I, I have my knife ready here, and I am going to open the box, but of course, I have to start with a story, okay? There's a, listen, this channel is all about me telling you stories about my life and all kinds of things going on, and um, 
my what, my last video that I just posted, I started going on a little bit of a tangent, a little rant, and it was pretty much all about the fact that I'm going to stop having giveaways on this channel, and uh, I'm going to download an app of a wheel that, um, if you are a subscriber, uh, once a month I will do a random day that I, I pick a random subscriber, and I will start giving them something. Okay, whether it be a Blu-ray, 4K, DVD, a uh, box of mystery movies, something. Okay, you, you got, you're going to get something for your subscription. Okay, uh, if you don't subscribe, you don't win. Okay, that's it. So, so in, I might even make it where it's, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, because I'm not really sure how this app thing works. So you might have to like and subscribe in order for you to get the the uh be put into the drawing so uh that i think that's a couple of youtubers i watch that's that's their thing is to like um like and subscribe and then and i've seen the wheel before i think it's kind of cool it's a wheel and it just it shows like so there's a guy that gives stuff away and what he does is he'll ask you to say something um like put something like put in the comments um let's say he's giving away a purple rain cd okay so he'll tell you to put down in the comments purple rain and then this app that he has will go through all of the comments or whatever, and he'll find the one that says it's a subscriber first, and then the subscriber that has Purple Rain somewhere in one of the comments, and they have the chance to win. I think I'm going to go that route, okay? Because I think that that's the, the honest way, the, the most legit way, and, and the, 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 the fair way to do it. Um, so that's where I'm going with that. But I will tell you that... Um, Recently, I've had a little bit of a um, uh, oh, almost, almost almost cut my finger off. Uh, a little uh, lately, I've had I've been having a little bit of uh, turmoil in my life. Um, if if you watch this channel, you know that when I speak about my family, um, so so let's let me make this very clear. When I say my family, I'm pretty much speaking about my mother and father. Okay, please do not be um, misunderstood. Uh, mis please do not misunderstand that and think that I am speaking about um, uncles, cousins, um, nieces, nephews, or anything like that. It has nothing to do with any of those people. Okay, uh, usually not, not even even I have a brother. I, it usually has even nothing to do with him. It, it's usually the bulk of it is about my mother and my father and the way that they raised me and the things that they did and 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 the, the issues that I've had. So just recently. I got a uh, message from one of my family members, which I found very odd that I got a message from one of my family members. And, and, and the message was, is uh, I'm getting contacted by um, uh, your mother. Uh, she's uh, rallying the family against you. She's rallying the family against you. You can do it. Okay, so I stopped for a second. I'm like, um... Why? You know, it's, it's, it, it, listen, if you have a problem with me personally, why drag other people into it? I mean, I understand that. Yeah, okay, I'm sitting in front of a a, a, a camera here and I'm and I'm preaching to the whole world here. I'm, I'm pouring my guts out. I'm telling my stories and everything like that. And I'm letting you guys know this is the, this is a this is a therapeutic thing for me. This is this is doctor prescribed actually. When I talked to my counselor on the phone the other day, he said that this is a great outlet for me to tell stories of my life and let it all out. Don't keep everything all bottled up inside. Your head's going to explode. That's pretty much what he said. He goes, you keep everything all bottled up inside. Eventually, you're going you're gonna to break down. You're going to explode. It's going to be a problem. <laughs> and you might take it out on the wrong person. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, I've been... I've been and, and, and they asked me if I had any hobbies. And I said, well, I, I consider this channel to be a hobby. I, I enjoy doing it. I sit down and I, I collect things. I collect movies and toys and CDs and media and stuff like that. And then I, I open them up and I tell a story about how I got them. Uh, so they were like, keep going with that. Keep keep doing the channel. Keep keep don't stop doing it. It's keeping your mind occupied, okay? Because while when your mind's not occupied, your mind's thinking about crazy things. So keep your mind occupied and keep on doing it. So um, I get this text message from from a relative, and I'm not gonna say which relative. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna keep her guessing. <laughs> because if you because number one, if you look at my my description, I changed my descriptions on my channel to. If you are uh, an immediate, I use the immediate family of mine. So uh, to make it so that I can make that very clear that I'm not talking about 
cousins and aunts and uncles and stuff like that. I'm talking about the people who raised me. I'm talking about the people that gave that that gave uh, life to me. Okay, that that's why I always speak about. That's why I am speaking about. I'm not speaking about. Uh, and if I talk about my kids, you know, I talk about my kids or and or my wife, and that that's that's the way it goes. I I come out and say it. But when I say my family, I, I don't want anybody to misunderstand that. I'm not talking about cousins, aunts, uncles, uh, brothers, um, uh, my kids, unless I say specifically one of my kids did this thing. Like, hey, this idiot did this. So this, this this dummy did this. So if I say something like that, then, then they know that it's them. And usually they agree with me. They're like, yeah, well, we did that. And uh, everything's cool. My, my kids know me by now. And they, they've accepted me for who I am. But unfortunately, I have family members that have not accepted me for who I am or what I am and do not take responsibility for creating who I am and what I am. You created this mess. You did this to me, okay? You you made me into the person I am today. I uh, and, if, and if you didn't, then I raised myself and I made myself into this person. You love me. You really love me. <laughs> and I, you know, being that I teach preschool and I teach children moral values because i was never taught any moral values when i was a kid i was not taught about the birds and the bees from my father i learned the birds and the bees from my friends and, and people that i uh hung around with and and thumbing through a uh sears catalog or finding a uh a hundred year old playboy magazine in the basement of the apartment building that we lived in that's how i learned about life okay uh, i did not learn that from sitting down with my father and he's like hey son son we're gonna we're going to have a talk right now about, about men and women, and this is what it's going to be. You know, like the stuff you see in the movies. You know, stuff you see in TV shows that you always wish that, that you, it was like a real thing, but it's not, maybe it's a real thing in some people's world, but it's not a real thing. It, it was never a real thing in my world. It was more of like a, a, a hit or miss for you, my friend. You know, uh, listen, we brought you into this world. Good luck. You know, I, I, I hope you make it. I hope you survive, you know. But uh, in general, you know, uh, they, they never look at themselves and, and say, you know what, I got to take responsibility for the mistakes that I made. I, listen, I, I take I take full responsibility for the mistakes that I've made in my life. Okay, I, if I've done something wrong, I, I try to take accountability for it. I, I try to teach my kids to take accountability for the things that they do wrong. Hey, sometimes they get it right, sometimes they get it wrong. But I can't have guilt not knowing that I didn't try. Okay, I got daughters. My daughters come up to me with with stories that I don't want to hear. Okay, my, my son comes up to me with stories that I don't want to hear. But obviously, they have enough trust in me. And, and that they can they can share these things with me, which I I, I you know I got to give myself just a little bit of credit, the fact that that my kids even talk to me because I have no ambition whatsoever <laughs> ever do I never have ever never have ever have I ever woken up in the morning and said listen I feel like I need to tell uh one of my family members, mom and dad, um you know good morning I love you or I miss you or I care about you or what I, I I don't feel it I I I am I, I what I tried to explain to people is that I am numb to these people. I have a numb feeling. There's there's no there's no hate and there's no love. There's just nothing. There's numb. It's just numbness. And um so what what happened was I guess after me putting changing my description and pretty much my description now says if you are a family that is easily offended, uh I advise you to switch over to cats falling or uh um family feud fails or something like that. There's tons of things on YouTube to watch. You don't need to be watching me. Okay, you don't need to. It's not, it's not necessary. If you feel like your your, your itty bitty feelings are gonna be hurt, don't watch me because I'm going to I'm gonna piss you off. Okay, that, I, I'm telling you right now. Uh, mark my words. I am gonna say something. I am gonna do something. Something's gonna come out of my mouth that is going to rub you the wrong way because it's true. Listen, listen. Things are funny because they're true. They're true because they're funny. And things hurt when they're true also. Okay, so if I say something that sets you off. More than likely, you you stopped for a second, evaluated what you said or did or whatever in your life, and you're kind of like, yeah, I screwed up. Uh, I don't know how to make it better. Oh, that was so stupid. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to make it very clear, you can't make it better. You can't make it better because now I'm too old, okay, and I really don't care anymore. What, what, what do you, how are you going to make it better? Please tell me how you're gonna make it better. Uh, uh, would you like to go for a, a bike ride? Is that what you want? You want to go for? A, you want to go camping? Do you want to go camping with me? Do you want to go on a fishing trip with me? What What do you want to go? Do you want to go play some basketball? And you want to play catch, Dad? What 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 do you think you're gonna do in this stage of the game 
to make things better? How how are we gonna patch it up? How are we gonna make it feel? feel listen, my my father had had a um retirement fund or whatever. Um, I believe right before we, we had our blowout and everything like that, I believe he just signed everything right over to my brother. Or, or probably by now, because I know he got mad at my brother after the fact. He's probably just going to leave all his, if he has any money, because the guy used to gamble all his money away anyway. But if he has a dime or a car or a house, or whatever it is, I don't expect nothing coming from that man. So I don't care. It's the same thing with my mother. My, I don't I don't expect a penny to come from that lady. I don't want nothing. Matter of fact, I gotta tell I tell you, we went we went to go visit her. I'd say this was probably about three years ago. Maybe three years ago we went to go visit her. And when I say three years, it was probably six. Okay, because you know how how when I, when I say things, it's not, never the right right time, whatever. We went to go visit her, and my grandmother, for years, my grandmother who I loved and adored and still love and adore. Okay, even though she passed away, I still love and adore her. Okay, and I and I love and adore her the day I died because the woman loved me unconditionally. Listen, she she was. I'm sorry, I'm gonna swear. She was batshit crazy, okay? She was a crazy woman, okay? She was crazy, but she was crazy in a good way. I'm crazy. Okay? I, I, I am cra I'm batshit crazy in a good way. I, I, I am crazy in a way where I help children. I'm crazy in a way where I'm funny enough to, to keep you guys interested. I'm crazy uh, in, in a way where where I love children that much that I do never I never want them to feel the way that I did or do. I tell everybody that. I'm like, that. that's why I became a teacher. It's because I never, ever want a child to feel the way I did or I do on a daily basis. So for my family members to watch this and say, okay, how can I, how can I make it better? Why, why does he hate me? Why, why, how can I make it better? You can't make it better. It's not going to get better. It, it, it's, it's, it's. I, I listen. I go through the motions for my family. If, let's, let's say my let's say my daughters and my son want to go visit. Okay, let's say they're having a cookout. Want to go visit? My wife wants, and and they want to go. I will go, and I will put on the show that I normally put on because I'm me. I'm I never stop being me. I'm I'm always on. What you see here is what what I you you would see if I was going out. If I was going to see someone, I'm I'm always on some kind of tangent or always always cracking some kind of joke or always making fun of either my life or the or somebody else's life it's just the way I am so they find me amusing but then I stop for a second I'm like listen I'm not I'm also not a clown okay I'm not a clown I'm not I'm not, I'm not here for your amusement okay uh, you you didn't you invited me here for your amusement you invited me here because you got family coming down and from from other people's family, not 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 my family, but other family, and you want them to meet me because I'm amusing. I, I amuse you. I tell jokes and I do. I make people listen. People laugh around me. They think I am hilarious. I I'm not, I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm not trying to be prideful. But for some reason, when I talk about my life, people think it's hilarious. Okay, um, and I I kind of always put myself in the same category as Robin Williams because I'm sure while he was telling his stories of his comedic life and, and, and being one of the top comedians in the world, okay, his inner workings were not working properly. And that's how I feel. My inner workings are not working properly. I am a mess. I have issues. I am numb. And so when I say family, I am completely speaking about my mother and father, the people that, that, that participated in the, the birthing process of putting a person on this planet and then just leaving them to their own demise. It takes a lot more to be a father than to deposit sperm. I think we all know that. Okay, that, that, that makes sense. Okay, is that, is that good enough? Is that good? Um, to my uncle um, and my cousins and my other living uh, relatives and even non-living relatives, um, I love you all. I got nothing negative to say about any of you people. Anything that ever went was said was said by either my father or my mother. Um, I was gaslit, brainwashed, told things that were totally not true because they were looking at it in one point of view, and I was not given the second point of view. But as a as an adult now, now I am starting to reflect and look back and see what my parents were for what they were okay and in the case of my father he was a money hungry fiend okay he had a gambling problem he would spend every dime that we possibly had on gambling 
He did not care about our feelings and how we felt about it. He, he would literally take me to a movie theater. He would have me stand in front of the movie theater. Let me stand in front of all the marquees and say, hey, listen, you pick a movie. We're going to watch a movie today. We're going to watch a movie. You pick it. Anything you want. Anything you want. I'll be right back. I'm going to go over there. They got scratch tickets over there. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to scratch a few tickets. I'll be right back. You pick that movie. You pick it. And I would stand there, big smile on my face, probably usually standing there on the side of my mother, big smile on my face, and, and pick the movie. And by the time dear old dad came back, he was broke. Just got paid $360. He, it, it's funny because if my, my mother denies everything. She, she's a denier. Deny, 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 deny. But it's funny how I literally in my head can remember how much money, okay, how much money my father made per week, which was around $365, give or take, if he works some overtime. Okay? I remember that. I can also tell you this right now. Ready? Watch this. Ready? And, and, and you could play these numbers if you want. My father had such a sickness that he would stop. He would gamble. He'd, gamble, he'd, he'd buy, he'd buy um, scratch tickets, and he would buy lottery tickets. And he would play the lottery religiously. This was, this was his religion. I, matter of fact, he would drop me off at church so he can go to the scratch ticket place so he can go play the lottery. And... If he couldn't, he he would send me in to go play the numbers for him. Now, you're probably asking, well, how old were you, sir? How old were you when he would have you go in and, and, and play these numbers for you? Well, my father was so well known at every single gambling facility in the area, uh, every scratch ticket selling place that they knew me and they allowed me to purchase scratch tickets or lottery tickets for my father. That's how bad his gambling was. So he would go actually to, to so there was one place in particular where he had a friend. Okay, he had a friend there that I believe he went to school with. Okay, I, now you, that may be wrong, but I believe he went to school with this person. If he didn't go to school with him, then my mother went to school with him. He befriended him. They they were friends. He took advantage of this man. Okay, he totally went. He'd go in there, and when he ran out of money, he'd be like, uh, "Hey, mind like you know fronting me some some tickets or fronting me some cash." So I can buy this or whatever. And the guy was nice enough to do it for him. But then after a while, my father wouldn't pay the guy back. And he wouldn't go back. Into... So he was he would go to another store. And he would do the same thing to another person. So after a while, he, would start to, he, he started feeling guilt. He didn't want the guy that he borrowed the money from to keep asking him where the money was. So he would send me in. And he would have me play his lottery tickets for him. Now, uh, being that my my... I've already gave the disclaimer that my family should not be watching this channel. I will tell you that. Watch this. Are you ready for this? Uh, uh, Mother dear, who should not be watching this channel. Um, the lottery numbers that my father played were the uh, state lottery, which was 2592, first three, last three, any order. Now, I was around six years old when he started having me do this. Okay. The fact that I am now in my 40s and I still remember every single number from what he played, shows that I was in there every day playing these numbers. Ready? 2592, first three, last three, any order. I don't even know what that means, but that's what I used to go and do. And the guy would give me the ticket, and I'd walk out. And then it was the the actual, the big lottery number with the, with the Powerball and all this like that. And that was 28, 10, 11, 18, 26. 2, 8, 10, 11, 18, 26. I'll never forget it, okay? And then he would say, give me about 20 quick picks. Give me 20 quick picks, just in case. 2592 uh, two, two, doesn't come out, and 2810 does not come out either. The fact that I am terrible at math, but I can remember those numbers as clear as day, and if my mother is not a complete oblivious moron, she would know and remember those numbers. 2592, first three, last three, any order. 281011, 1826 straight mega bucks okay now how would i remember that how would i know how would I, how would i be able to spit that and repeat it over and over? i'll do it again 2592 2810 11 18 26 over and over and over again if i was not forced to go in to that store and a bunch of other stores to play these numbers for my father because he was so sick and in his gambling state that he would force me to go in there and play the numbers for him and i didn't want to do it I didn't want to do it because know what know what happened? I would go into these stores and the people that ran the stores would be like, uh, is your father in the car? And my father would tell him, don't ever tell him I'm in the car. My father would literally park up the street around the corner. He would make me walk down the street, come around the corner and go to the place. And he, and listen to me. I was like seven, 
eight, nine, ten. I don't know whether a lot of these people believe this or not, okay? But I was walking. I you know, I walk I walked from home and I'm I came here to play daddy. And where's your father? Tell him I'm sick. Tell him I got the flu. Tell him I got this. Tell him I got that. Lies, lies, lies. Listen, my family is a bunch of liars, okay? They're a bunch of... Listen, I wouldn't believe them if their tongue came notarized, okay? They, they lie. They're just liars, okay? I come from a family of liars. So that's why, in my head, I'm like, listen, I need to base my life on honesty. It's time for me to break break the mold, break break the, break the chain, break the uh, break the habit, break the... break the. Listen, I had to be different. I had to be set apart, okay? I, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to be these people. I'm not going to let them turn me into them. They, they ain't happy. They're miserable people. I don't want to be a miserable person like them. I want to be different, okay? I would never call up any of my relatives, which I don't and I never did. I just don't bother, okay? It, my, my mother seems to think that I'm, I'm like, cons conspiring against her. I'm, I'm rallying everybody again, like she's trying to do right now. She's contacted family members. This is what's going on. She's contacted family members, and she's trying to rally them against, trying to, she's trying to get them to pick sides, and I'm trying to tell you, I'm telling you right now, I'm being dead honest. I, if you had a Bible, if I had a Bible to put my hand on right now, which I, I got Bibles all over this house, but if I, I, listen, stuff that happened to me happened. It's true. I just wish that somebody would take some damn ownership and, and just say, you know what? Yeah, I screwed up. I made some mistakes in my life. I, I, I wasn't the perfect dad. I wasn't the perfect mom. I, I, I'll just, I'll just leave you be. I'm ready to just, ready to just walk on the, it it just it just doesn't make any sense at this point in my life. You you want you want to make things better now that that it's already too late. It ain't gonna get better. It ain't gonna no, there's nothing you can say or do that is gonna make me feel like you're right. There's nothing. And the more you start getting people to to get it go against me, just shows how pathetic of a human being you are. Is that does that make you feel good? Does it make you feel good to talk about your 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 first firstborn? And and totally tear them apart in front of people that know me, love me, care about me, respect me, and try to make me look like I'm the bad guy. Try to make me look like I'm the loser, like I'm the one that screwed up in this relationship. I was a kid. I was four years old, five years old, six years old, seven. You screwed up. You you listen. You screwed up. Take ownership and live with it. Live with it. And, and another another thing that that was shot at me is that um. I guess I I I didn't notice, but I want I want listen. Number one, uh, if I do have family members like like cousins and and, and uh, uncles and aunts and stuff like that that do watch this channel, thank you, thank you for watching the channel, thank you for listening to me, thank you for paying attention, thank you for being a part of my life, okay? Because I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you, uh, you are probably the highlights of my life, okay? What I have no ill thoughts or feelings. Listen, I got ill thoughts and feelings about a lot of things in my life, but. I, when it comes to when I think about my cousins and my, my aunts and my uncles and everything like that, the sad thing is that sometimes I would go visit my uncles and I'd be like, why couldn't that be my dad? Or I'd go visit my, my aunts and be like, why couldn't that be my aunt? They, they, they were just, I had some cousins that was just so much love in their house. Now, maybe behind the scenes there wasn't. Maybe there was, maybe they, maybe they were going through the same thing I was going through, but I don't know. I would never know. It's like they would never know what was going on with me if I didn't come out here and verbally say it. If I didn't, if I didn't come out here and say it right into this camera and say this is what was going on in my life. There was things that were wrong in my life that were going on, and you didn't see it because my father was extremely good at covering his tracks. He was good at lying to people right to their face and making him look like he was a superstar. And my mother was is is really good at playing like a major victim. If she wanted to leave, she could have left at any time. In that relationship. Matter of fact, I, I, have, I have said this over and over again. Because her big thing was, and it is, still is to this day, is I stuck it in there with your father through all of the abuse and all of this and this and that and that because of you. Because I did not want you to get hurt. I didn't want I didn't want to affect you in any way. Lady, I was being affected. Okay, the guy was a lunatic. He was... He, he was throwing things at me. He was swearing at me. He was smashing things. He was There was all kinds of crazy stuff going on. You, you never once just stopped and asked. You say, hey, listen, hey, how do you feel about the situation? Hey, you, you want to go? You think we should You think we should go to get... Do you, do you remember ever me sitting there and, and crying my eyes? I'll say, please don't go. Please, please don't, don't, don't. Please don't. I don't, I don't want you and dad to break up. I, I don't recall that. I really don't. 
And if I if I ever did, then you know what? I I'm a, I'm gonna apologize to you for that. I, I, you're gonna get listen. I'm not big on on giving apologies for stupid things, but I'm gonna apologize for for wanting my parents to be together if things were good. I don't know. My my mother's big thing is a lot of things happen that I don't even know. So you want to blame me for that too? You want you want so so terrible things happen to you in your relationship with your husband, and I didn't know about it. And you want to blame me for that too? What am I like the scapegoat here? What what am I like the the, the target? What do I got a target on me? Or you want to blame me for things I didn't even know about? You 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 guts to be crazy. You got you guts to be out of your mind to blame. So listen, if you're if I was oblivious to what was going on behind closed doors, and you're just telling me now that I'm, I'm forty plus years old, that's just your stupidity. Okay, that is dumb. Okay, if you if it was that traumatic of an experience in your life, you get out. I'll tell you right now, if me, me and my wife had a terrible relationship, I'd get out. I I, I would just leave. I, I figure I figure out a way to leave because. My wife actually uh, is is the breadwinner in this house. She's the one that brings home the the, the, the money that pays the mortgage. Just that. so I so I I probably have to figure out a way. But but in general, I don't think I if my my mother if my wife was an abuser. Now I'm just just saying this using like a kind of a an example. If my wife was an abuser and was abusing my children, like either physically, mentally, verbally, sexually, whatever whatever the case might be. If if she was doing that to them. I would grab my kids and get the hell out, okay? For the for their own sanity, for my sanity, for 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 the future of their 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 lives and their children and everything. I would have grabbed them and, and got the hell out. But no, twenty years my parents were together. Twenty years my father and mother were married, and supposedly for twenty years it was just twenty years of misery. Who the hell stays together with somebody for twenty years of misery, and then all of a sudden, I'm gonna tell you something, okay? This is this is this is something that that I I've never even like shot out on this channel. Um, when my mother left, when she when she took off on us, I'm the one that told her to leave. I'm the one that told her to get out of the house because she was she was telling people that I was a liar. She was attacking me. She was saying all these nasty, terrible things about me, and she was blaming me for something that absolutely had nothing to do with me. I didn't do anything, and she blamed me for something that I never said or never did. And I got the story afterwards. I got the full story afterwards, and she yet to apologize and say, "Hey, you know what? You were right. It wasn't you. It was somebody else. Somebody said something that it wasn't even you." And I'm sorry for everything that I ever. Said. I've yet to get that apology. I just got. I got brushed off. I got the. Hey, you're everything you're saying is a lie. But I'll tell you right now. Listen, people. And if you if this is family watching, you know what the situation is right now. Okay? I knew what the situation was then. And I was called a liar for it. Okay? Just remember that. I was called the liar. But the truth is now out there. Just let's just just think about that. So if you are family, I want to thank you for watching and and I hope you continue watching because maybe you'll start to understand me just a little bit better. I'm not a bad guy. I never been a bad guy. I got nothing but love for these people, and I I will openly say that. Matter of fact, I run into to I run into cousins, um, and with open arms I give them a hug, and, and it's a hot felt hug because I I miss them. I little legitimately miss them. I I think I've been robbed, and I robbed my children of some wonderful people, some amazing people that that brightened my life made my life better made me feel good you know I, while my father was hanging around with his brothers and stuff like that and talking crap and, and putting on his little little fiasco show and everything like that i was with my cousins and i would spend time with my cousins and i and i, and I adored my cousins so when he got to the argument over, over greed because my grandmother passed away and and uh like a vulture he swooped in and tried to try to grab everything he possibly could and when my my uncles and whatever got control of certain things, and he ha he had bitterness. He, listen, that that's a him thing. That wasn't a me thing. That was a him thing. I was just the poor bugger that was caught up in it, and I'm my cousins were probably the same way. So with that said, yeah, if if you if you uh, listen, I it was brought it was just brought to my attention that there are some people that watch my video that are family, and I want to let you know very clearly that when I address my family as the people that screwed me up. I am not addressing you in any way, shape, or form. You did nothing to mess me up. Matter of fact, you were a blessing in my life. You were my temporary escape from an insane situation. And I'll tell you right now, when I was smaller, it was insane. 
as I started getting older, it got worse. When I became in my teenage years, it was terrible. And now in my adult years, I, I wish I could forget it, but I can't. So I use this outlet to tell people what's going on. And, and, I, and I get the comments from the people, and usually they're very supportive. And I will tell you that because of your names, because of whatever you use as your YouTube um, name or whatever, I have no idea if you're family or not. I get, a, I get a guy that I have a feeling, small feeling, that he's family. And, I, and I, it's, I, it's a guy, okay? I, I feel it's, it's a guy. The only reason why I feel like it's a guy is because of the, the logo that they use. The, the, not the logo, but their, um, um, what do they call it? Um... Uh, they're not the emblem logo screenshot. Their their icon icon. Let's call it an icon. I'll call it an icon. The, the little the little emoji or icon or whatever it is that they use for their YouTube channel, and they're always very compassionate and very clear on, you know what, bud, hang in there or or keep on going. You know, doing a great job. Very supportive. Very very supportive uh, people. There's a, there's a couple of them. So, so in my head, I always kind of hoped it was family. I always kind of hoped that it was. I had a cousin, one of my cousins. Like, I like my when I, when I was younger, it was funny because um, uh, I had I had a cousin that I, hey, screw it. I I had a cousin John that he would my whenever anybody would ask me who my favorite cousin was. Now I got and I got a cousin cousin uh, a cousin named Christy too that that was my one of my female favorite cousins. But um whenever anybody asked me about this cousin, I would uh and they said who's your favorite cousin, I would always say my, my favorite cousin is my cousin John. And they never really understood because my favorite my cousin John really didn't have a lot to do with me. But I kind of admired him because he he like he was just cool. He 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 just oozed it's just certain it's just, okay. You comment below. There's just some people. You got if you got family and you got cousins and stuff like that. Tell me you don't have one of these cousins or whatever or, or relatives that just ooze of like coolness. Like now, tell me if I I don't, I don't how do we even say this? Because if it's a family member that's watching this channel and they and they they can't even they can't even comment on this. If I remember correctly, my cousin John, for his high school graduation. Now I'm picturing this. Okay, I'm picturing this, and I don't even know why I got this picture in my head. I'm picturing him wearing a white, either a white suit, a white tuxedo, a white button-down shirt, and a big smile on his face like this. You know, I, I, I this was I, I want to say this was during his um his his um prom, might have been his prom, and he's wearing a white shirt and he's got this big smile on his face. I don't even know where I saw this picture. I don't know if it was in a yearbook. I don't know what it was. But but the guy just oozed of coolness, you know, like 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 the fawn. He was like the fawns to me. He was he was like hey, like it's like like stuff just rolled off this guy's back. Then I got I had I had I had another cousin that was just he was just like a, a sweetheart. Uh, tough to explain. Um, he just never had nothing bad to say about anybody or anything, and always smiled. And then I got my female cousin that that is approximately around the same age as I am. And we were kind of each other's support. Uh, in the morning, she would get dropped off at school, and we would watch TV together. And um, I'm 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 gonna throw this out there. It's, it's kind of funny. Um, if you ever seen the movie Hard to Hold, starring Rick Springfield, uh, in the beginning of the movie Hard to Hold, there's a scene where Rick Springfield is running from his dressing room, and his towel drops. Now she was a little bit younger, you know. Not, oh, she was the same age as me, but I'm saying she was young. And we were going through like these pubescent stages together, I guess. You know what I mean? Like where, where things, uh, we start to actually notice the, uh, you know, opposite sex. And uh, she would actually have me keep rewinding that scene of Rick Springfield. Because uh, she would get dropped off in the morning. And I believe we got a ride to school by somebody. I can't remember who gave us a ride. That I can't remember. I can't remember who gave us a ride. I don't know if it was one of my aunts or whatever. But somebody would give us a ride to school in the morning. Or we take the bus together. The same. Something. I can't remember that part. But we, for some reason, she was there in the morning with me. And I would put in Hot to Hold on VHS. And I just keep rewinding that scene. Because she, she would laugh. And we'd watch it together. And she'd just laugh. And I remember that. So... I just want to throw this out there, you know, as as embarrassing as that might sound to her or whatever it is. It goes to show that 
my memory is still good when it comes to people I care about. So and things that happen in my life. So for the for for my mother to be contacting people and saying, "Hey, listen, this guy's a liar, and this guy makes up these stories," and and even if you want, if you call her and try to fact check her, fi- uh, trying you're trying to fact check me, and you and you contact her, you're gonna get her side of the story. You're gonna get the poor me. You're gonna get the the sadness. You're gonna get the oh, uh, I'm the victim and the, the problem. Listen, we were all the victims. Okay, we were all the victims. Okay, I, I like to say this very clearly to to people that say, "Oh, you know, don't play the victim." Don't play the victim. I, I was I was told that not too long ago. Don't play the victim. And that bothered me. It, it really, truly bothered me because I do not feel like I played the victim. I feel like I'm a plain out survivor. The fact that I'm still sitting in this chair right now in front of you people and still telling these stories and still speaking the way that I speak, living with the people that I lived with and going through the things that I went through. I mean, things were thrown at me. I was abused, okay? A with a capital A, abu- I, ab- I'm not even saying abused. I, abu- I was ab- I was verbally abused as a child. I was mentally abused as a child, okay? I was sexually abused as a child. I was an abused child, okay? I buried things, and as I'm getting older, unfortunately, I don't know what's going on with me, and this is why I'm uh I'm going back into therapy. Uh, things are starting to come out. They're coming out in my dreams. I'm having nightmares. I'm having nightmares of specific things that I can't make up. And the funny thing is, is not too long ago, well, it's, uh, once again, when I say not too long ago, it was a long time ago, <laughs> I, um, I had a dream about this house and, and this thing that happened to me when I was a child. I had the the house memorized. I had the, the driveway memorized. I had every, everything was to the T. And so I was like, you know what, since I know that contacting my mother and flat out telling her, listen, did this ever happen to me? She was going to deny, 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 deny. I, I kind of tricked it out of her. All I did is, was text message her or call, or call her and say, hey, um, did we ever go to a uh, house that had a long driveway when I remember like uh, a a rocky path, a rocky driveway where we parked right in front of the house. And then we would go inside and this, this family that we would go to, they they had pistachios all the time. And, and um, uh, there was a basement. And in the basement, there was a, a sliding accordion door. And uh, they had a couple of children. And we would go over there and visit a lot. Um, and uh, right away, because I didn't say anything else, she was like, oh, yeah, that was my that was one of my friends. And I was so happy that, that my that your 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 father let me let me spend time with my friend and 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 all this and and I, and then after she she totally totally backed me up 110% on everything i said from every single descriptive little word that i could remember from a dream from a, from a dream slash nightmare whatever you want to call it that i had after she confirmed this house confirmed these people confirmed the whole thing then i let her know that something happened. And I didn't get anything right away. And then I think maybe it was like a week later, I got like, a, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that that happened to you. I did not know. Well, I'll tell you right now, I told my, my father about it when I was a kid. I told him, and his words to me was, shut up. Okay, shut up. I, I don't believe a word he's saying. Just, just keep keep doing what you do. We're going to keep doing what we're doing. You just shut up. It's not true. Not, whatever you're saying, is not, you're a liar. It's not true. Shut up. That, that, that's what I was told. I was told to shut up. And things just continued to happen. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it like that. Okay? So like I said, if you if you are family and you really think that that these things are not true and the things that come out of my mouth and you wanna fact check me, um contact somebody else because you're not gonna get the truth. You get you're gonna get whatever they saw or whatever they believe or whatever they made up in their head or whatever whatever it's gonna you're gonna you're gonna get a, you're gonna get false you're gonna get false stuff. You're going to get full. I'm sorry. You you are. Um, and I really, you know what? Sometimes I really wish I was lying. I really wish that what I was saying in front of this camera was a lie. I really do. I really, I really, because if, if I didn't go through all of these things that I went through right now, now number one, I, I, I said this in a video not too long ago. I reached a point in my life where I feel I'm thankful actually for them because now I'm able to help other people. And I almost feel like, like God put me in those situations to help children so they don't ever have to feel like I do or did. You know what I mean? So so now I'm able to give thanks for it. And I don't hate anybody because my, my new beliefs 
in life and, and uh in my relationships that I have with the uh, with the higher being um I don't hate nobody but don't try to make me look like a fool and don't try to make me look like I'm the bad guy and don't try to ruin relationships with people that that love and care about me because that's just ridiculous okay you're a ridiculous person for doing that you're you're a petty person for doing that you're a petty petty person for coming after me for speaking the truth if you can't handle the truth well, I, not, not, now I'm like you can't handle it. Now, now, now I'm I'm Jack Nicholson. In it, okay, you can't you can't handle the truth. I'm sorry you can't. And um, to rewind just a little bit to go back to uh, uh the so many the because I I know I, I went off track and and you're probably like what does this have to do with uh you know that uh, your father left everything to your brother and uh you know if you if they listen the bottom line is if they go I'm not wishing anything on people but I don't expect anything. Now my mo my mother owns a um a thing that my grandmother had in her house on her wall that my grandmother had forever and I loved my grandmother. I loved her and I adored her and I wish I had something to remember her by. Unfortunately when she passed, I wasn't given anything. I wasn't given I don't I don't even have I don't even have photographs. I don't even have photographs. And and I don't want a rehashed photograph. I want stuff that like I want the real stuff. I want the old you know, uh, Polaroids or the old, like, uh, tannish type pictures that have been, you know, set in front of the, the sun for years and they're faded and, they, and, and you can just barely see her face. That's what I would want. Um, but she had this thing on the wall for years. And what it was is it's like a Portuguese thing where it's like dead flowers. They, I guess they were alive at one point, but now they're dead flowers behind a walkway and a whatever and... And this whole, it was like a scenery thing. And she always had it in, in matter of fact, and I'm sure my uncle's watching this video. He always watches my videos. And I'm, and if you want to fact check anything with that, call him up, contact him. He'll fact, he doesn't need, he doesn't need the stress though. He don't, he don't need the stress in his life. So maybe he shouldn't contact him. But if he's watching, he knows what I'm talking about. It was in the room where the ceiling collapsed. You know, that, that, that room where her wonderful brothers, uh, gave her the, gave her the house that originally belonged to her and, and. And left it, let her stay there for free, let her live in that house for free because he had her, when she was sick, he had her sign over the house and, and give her the house and said, okay, listen, but the stipulation was she could live in the house for free for the rest of her living days. But meanwhile, he wouldn't put a dime in the damn house because he was. Listen, my grandmother had mice in her house. Uh, you opened up a refrigerator and it was full of disgusting, rotten old food. When, when, when they had to clean out, her, it was the. But anyway, her her she had a a uh, room. It was a living room. When you walked through the house, it was a kitchen or dining room area because her kitchen was like this little walkway thing. But she had this dining room area, and then she had a like a curio cabinet type thing straight ahead. As soon as you walk through the door, and then look, I pay, I'm painting a whole picture for you, aren't I? See, and, and you people that have been in this house, goes to show I'm not lying. If you kept on walking straight, she had another room with wood paneling. Um, and I want to say that it had some kind of weird, stupid, um, um, uh, uh, like the old, uh, the old boats used to have the, um, steering wheel, the steering things of the boats. I don't know why it had this, but this is what, this is what I remember. This is what I remember. Uh, wood paneling with these terrible wallpaper of boat. I don't even know what the heck they call them. The, the boat steering wheels, but the, the old ones from like the old boats. But then the room next to it, which in between the room next to it, she had her alarm clock, which she lived by. She had this radio alarm clock, and it was right there on this little little table. But then there was another room right on the side. It was actually a closet right there, and then a room right over here. And the room, the ceiling had fallen down. Ceiling fell down. It was down for years. You could literally look up at the ceiling, and you could see the planks from the ceiling. Because all of the sheetrock from the ceiling had fallen down in this room. She had a, she had a a little love seat a couch in there, and she didn't have much. Uh, for a while, my my uncle would bring stuff in, and he put I believe he had a pool table in there once, and that that blew my mind because it was such a it was a small room, so you really couldn't really play a good game of pool in it. I but 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 I don't even know how he got it up there. They lived on the third floor. Uh, how he got it up on the third floor? I don't. I listen. I I I reached the point in my uncle's where I stopped questioning some of the things things that he he did because it, some of the stuff was just. It was, it was funny. <laughs> it was just funny that, I don't know how he got that thing up there, but I, I remember a pool table being in that room at one point. And uh, listen, comment below if there was, there was not a pool table. And I'm just imagining things. But, the, but I know that there was a hole in the ceiling. 
And on the wall, on I, so when you came in this room, hole was in the ceiling, couch was right here in front of you, a love seat, whatever it was. But on the right hand side, she had this this glass thing with these dead flowers. It was a walkway. I believe she got it from her grandmother. And when I went to go visit my mother a long time ago, I I I told her, I said, Oh, that's the thing that grandma had in her house, whatever. I always wanted that thing. So she's like uh jokingly and non jokingly, she's like, I'm gonna put your name on it. And when I pass, you know, uh, I'll make sure that you get it. The sad thing is I don't want it anymore. I, I don't want it. I don't want anything from that house. Nothing. Really. I don't, I don't, I, I don't want it. Um, when my wife and kids asked me why I didn't want it, I said, I feel like it's been tarnished. I feel like it came from somebody that could do no wrong in my eyes and now it's hanging in, in a place where I, I I feel it's a trigger. That thing being I, I would it would break my heart to destroy it because it belonged to my grandmother, but I don't want it in my house. I really don't. So if if you are uh still viewing this and you shouldn't be because I've give you clear I've given you clear warning not to watch this channel, but you keep going because I, I think you like the abuse. And I, hey, maybe you do. Maybe that, maybe that's your thing. Maybe that was maybe that was your kick. If you stayed stayed with my father for twenty years and he was abusing you for twenty years, maybe you just love abuse. I'm trying to save you from the abuse and say, listen, don't watch this because I'm gonna bring back the past. I'm gonna bring back things in my life that messed me up. I'm gonna tell stories about my life. So maybe you shouldn't be watching this channel. I made I made made it very clear. But she had this thing, and she, like she said, she put her name on the back of it. I I don't want it. I don't I don't want anything. I don't want anything. There's nothing I think that any of these people could give me that could ever make anything feel better. There's nothing that they can give me that it could ever... It, 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 you can't make up for it. You just, you just you can't. All right. With that said, I got a pack. I got a package for Full Moon. You guys have been waiting. You saw my lovely uh, piece of garbage, uh, Leech Woman. You heard my stories. I appreciate you. Hit that like button, subscribe button. Uh, thanks to my uh, new um, found friend that uh, is supporting this channel now. My um, my sponsor. I'm calling him my sponsor. You, you are now my sponsor. If I was in AA, you would be my sponsor. You're, you're backing me up. You're, you're, you're supporting this craziness, and you're now uh, you're now a part of the family. Welcome. I love you. Um, yeah, so I got something for Full Moon. Uh, this was during the 4th of July sale. I couldn't pass it up. I, I don't know why. Never seen one episode of any of this stuff, but there was a big 4th of July sale, and like every 4th of July for the last maybe five years, I bought something from Full Moon because I can't beat the prices, and I I got a, I got a problem. Okay, I, I I am a I'm a movie addict. Okay, uh, my father had a gambling problem. I got a movie problem. Okay, uh, over 10,000 movies in all around this room. Over probably about nine thousand or so CDs. I, I got a I got a little bit of a problem. So when they when I see sale and I see full moon or I see trauma or I see an arrow or I see a uh, vinegar syndrome or, or uh, Kino or um, Scream Factory Shout Factory, I I, I got to take advantage. You know, I got to do it. And this was kind of something cool that I didn't even know was a thing. So I make sure I'm throwing things that are. Uh... So the, the deal was with the the summer sale was the more you buy the the more you say you more the the more you um you uh, get what the heck is this five signed yeah you know what screen for uh uh vinegar uh vinegar syndrome you know what full moon you kind of suck okay so so the deal was was that um so let me let me let me show you this i'm, I'm gonna move these things out these are other movies i'm gonna show you them in a minute this is what i this is what i purchased and there's a reason why i purchased it and this is the third time they've done this to me. Third time they've done this to me. You know, and the funny thing is, I'll probably, I'll probably keep buying from them because I love their stuff so much. But I, I wish they would stop screwing me over. Um, so I bought the Evil Bong box set because I was told it was going to be autographed by um, Ch Charles Ban. Is that right, Charles Ban? The guy, the guy that, the 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 head honcho at. Um, Full Moon, okay? I, I've always wanted a Charles Band. I think it's Charles... I, I hope I'm saying that right. I hope I'm saying Charles Band. They, did they put his name on the thing? No, they didn't put it on here. Nope. I, I want to say it's Charles Band. I hope I'm saying it right. 
Does this thing say Charles Band anywhere on it? Wait, hold on. Wait a minute. Uh, CD, subscribe, da -da 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 -da, directed to Nicholas, whatever. No, 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 no. He does not take, he's, I guess he's not taking responsibility for this one. Um, so, the promise was with the Evil Bong box set was that the first 500 buyers would get an autographed copy, uh, an autographed box set. Well, I was one of the first 500, and I didn't get an autographed copy. Prior to that, I bought the um, uh, Puppet Master um, uh, chest, the uh, Toulon's uh, chest, and that was supposed to be autographed. And I didn't get an autographed copy of that either. And I paid a lot of money for that thing. And I was a little, I was aggravated that I didn't get autographed. Now, once again, right here, and this is this is so funny that they, it's it's right here, and they put it in, on the packing slip. Um, so what I bought was before I read the packing slip and tell you why 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 I'm a little aggravated right now. This is the complete subspecies collection. And it comes in a coffin, which I thought was so cool. Now, I will tell you, I've never seen one subspecies movie. So this is the part where I tell you to comment below and tell me if subspecies is any good. But the reason why I bought this is because it was supposedly was a box set. And I, I'm a sucker for box sets that come, came, or come, came, came, come, came, comes in a coffin. So let me take this part out. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there's, the, there's that. And then in here, so a little unboxing of sorts. This video is probably like three hours long. I don't even know. And it comes in a coffin. Look at this thing. It, it's a literally a little tiny coffin. And if you open up the coffin, oh, the lid comes right off. I didn't know that. It comes with uh, the subspecies movies. Okay? So you get the entire subspecies collection. Subspecies. Subspecies two. Let me just make sure they're all there because I, I don't I don't trust Charles anymore. Subspecies uh so so sorry bloodlust subspecies three, uh vampire journals, uh subspecies four blood storm, uh subspecies five uh blood rise and subspecies the original motion picture soundtrack CD. So I think that's all of it. And you get inside here I think is a yeah it's a, a little uh Radu figure. Not Ragu, Radu, which that, I'm not even going to open that up. That's just stupid. Because um, I could care less about a Radu. What did I do with that damn lid? What did I do with the cover? Oh, here it is. So, yeah, it's got a cool little coffin. And I thought that was cool. And I'm like, if I'm going to buy subspecies, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna get the, the, the complete set on Blu-ray. And I'm going to get the cool little coffin. But promise to me, with this collection, I'll put that back together later. Uh, and I'll put that. I'll put this on top of this, but then I'll put the plastic back on this thing. Um, but what was promised to me was an autographed poster by, I believe, Charles Band. Once again, promised to me. And right here on the packet slip, I wish I I want I want to try to show this to you without giving me. Oh, if I go like this, actually, if I fold this like this, I mean, I'm gonna fold this like this. I'm gonna show you what's going on here. Exactly what they did to me. Show you what they did. Yeah, I'm gonna fold it so you can't see anything. You'll be able to see the. Um, okay. There you go. I'm coming forward. What does that say? Can you read it? Subspecies 5 signed 11 by 17 poster, 100% off. I was supposed to get it. Out of stock was written in. Out stock. Out stock. They charged me nothing, but I wasn't supposed to pay anything. It was a free gift by for, for buying the box set. Which was the reason why I even bought the box set was because I was like, finally, I'm going to get an autograph, Charles Band or whatever, or whoever the heck the guy was. I'm finally going to get the autograph. I still didn't get the damn autograph. Three box sets later, probably close to a grand between the Puppet Master one, which was right here. That's why I keep going like this, because Puppet Master one's right there, and the Evil Bong one's over there. And now I got the subspecies one, and I've yet to get this damn guy's autograph who... who I don't even know why I want it so bad. I just, I just, I would just want. Listen, after all, after the years of being a devoted full moon collector, I listen. I bought your stupid, uh, uh, ugly, uh, uh, leech woman. At least you could do is sign something for me and give it to me. Especially if you promise it to me. You don't give me a piece of paper that says out of stock. What the heck is going on with this company? I'm sorry. I'm a little. I'm a little aggravated right now. That's a little. That's a little troublesome. Because what I where's, where's that package? Let me hang on a second. That pack. Oh man, I threw it that far away. Listen, this subspecies box set thing was like a hundred dollars and change or whatever. That's a lot of money. 
And, and, and being the fact that I've never even seen one episode or any movie, I probably could have bought them individually for a lot less on the secondary market because they're proud. Because knowing Full Moon, these are all low budget movies. A lot of people buy them thinking that this, like, some species, oh, it's a vampire movie. They buy it and they're like, wow, this sucked. So I'm talking about not everybody, but there's some people that just really think that these movies are so low budget garbage that they just put them on eBay and they're like, you know what? $3, $4. And I'm not joking. If you go look up some species on eBay right now, you're guaranteed you're going to find yourself a copy for like 10 bucks or less. Guaranteed. On Blu ray. And. I was like, I'm going to buy the box set because I wanted the autograph, whatever. And then you you give me the packet slip. You don't even, without apology, not even apology on it that says out of, out, out stock. Shame on you, full moon. Okay. You, you kind of suck. Okay. I, 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 you just, you screwed me up again. You screwed me. But you know what? I'll still be an extra lie. I'll still be an extra lie. Because it's, listen, they got the cheese that I'm looking for. Okay. I, I like the, I like the government cheese. Um, so uh, uh, let me show you some things that I purchased here. I'm gonna try to put them in some kind of order here. Uh, I'll put them in. I'll put them in this order uh, of of real weird cheese crapola that was like, I think I need to see this. <laughs> okay. Um. So on top of the subspecies box set, which you just saw, that does come in a coffin and does have the movies in it, and it's totally unnecessary and totally the box itself is way too big for that size coffin. It's, it's mostly all styro like like packing. I don't know. Um, I ordered Sorority Babes in Slime Ball Bolorama. Yeah. Try saying that ten times fast. Um, I watched a trailer, and I was like... So, let me, let me make this clear. During that 4th of July sale, I want to say that most of these movies were like $7 or $8. Something like that. Like 8 bucks. I think they're like 8 bucks, And they're normally like 20 bucks Or $21 or $22. So, I was like, you know what? I'm going to grab them now. They might be total garbage, or they might be great, but for seven bucks, I'm, I'm willing to take that chance. And the more you bought, the more you saved. So I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna buy some more. Uh, so yeah, I bought the sorority babes in in uh, slime ball bolorama. Yeah, that that one right there. Um, don't know anything about it besides the fact that I watched a trailer and it it was about sorority babes uh, bowling uh, and getting killed in low budget form, full moon style. Uh, and then I got sorority babes. Uh, in uh, Slime Ball Bolorama Part 2, because as a completist, I can't have Part 1 or Part 2. I mean, even with the, even with the low-budget crappy movies, I gotta, I gotta have both of them, or else my collection is not complete. Then, I, I went with one that I have seen, but I have not seen it in years, and this was just funny. This was a funny, cheesy, and I gotta tell you, the guy that plays Dracula, um, I'm, I'm gonna be politically correct here, because I believe that, that, um, Little people like to be called little people, because um, it was little people, big world. Okay, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to take anything away from little people, because little people are, are great. I'm, I'm, I'm actually huge fan uh, of a lot of actors that are little people, like Warwick Davis. Warwick Davis, I, I adore. Um, the little guy from, um, what's his name from, um, from Game of Thrones. Love him. Love, loved him in, uh, uh, what was the uh, Three Deaths at a Funeral? Was that Three Deaths at a Funeral? They played in there when he played the. Uh, the father's boyfriend that the, the they didn't know about. I thought he was great. Um, so I, I got I, I I like some some uh, little people movie. I think they I think listen they, they just like us. Okay, if they're a good actor, they're a good actor. I'll tell you that the Game of Thrones guy, pff, mind blowing. Uh, Warwick Davis has been entertaining me since Willow. Okay, uh, Will Will actually he's been entertaining me since he dressed like a, a Ewok. Okay, uh, the guy the guy has been entertaining me for years. Um, love him, love him. So they, they did this really cheesy flick called The Creeps, which is actually just little people, Frankenstein, little person, Dracula, little person, mummy, and little person, uh, um, what else we got here? I can't even identify with that one. It's just a little person, whatever. Um, this is interesting. Um, I have it on DVD. Maybe that would be one of those things that I give away and you guys can see it too. Cause I don't know if this is a, a Blu-ray DVD combo pack full of uh, full moon never tells you what you're getting. They don't even give you what they don't even give you what you asked for. They you're lucky if you get what you get. Like, hey, full moon, you got a box. Good thing you got it. You're lucky you got it. And the last thing I got was uh, Demonic Toys Jack Attack, which is um, Jack. If you don't know what Demonic Toys is, it's part of uh, the Full Moon. One, it's I'll put in the top five Full Moon hit franchises. Okay, you have Demonic Toys, you have Puppet Master. You have uh, Evil Bong. You have Ginger Dead Man. Those uh, you got. Um, yeah, I was gonna say Class of Nukem High. That's trauma. Um, 
but those those are the ones. I, I consider actually those to be the top. Puppet Master number one. Okay. Uh, number two would probably be Ginger Dead, Ginger Dead Man, which I have yet to, uh, that I'm waiting for. Hey, next summer, guys, when you want to rip me off again, Ginger Dead Man box set. Okay, I know Ginger Dead, Ginger Dead, uh, Ginger Dead Man is coming out on Blu-ray, and I will be I will be purchasing it so separately. But if you ever release a box set, I will double dip because there is multiple Ginger Dead Mans, and then he also he collaborated with the Evil Bong guy, and and he became part of. Uh, um, the evil bong ginger dead man thing. I think it was ginger weed man or whatever. I'll buy that too. Um, yeah, so the next one in line would be Demonic Toys and Doll Man. They kind of go side by side. There was a, there was even a, a movie called Demonic Toys versus Doll Man. And um, Demonic Toys, actually, uh, that's where Baby Oopsie came from. And I do have a life-size 1.1 scale Baby Oopsie that talks. It says very vulgar things and he's amazing. That they nailed. I gotta tell you right now, if you haven't seen my video on the uh, unboxing of um, Baby Oopsie, uh, it's somewhere in down there, so, somewhere in my uh, in my uh, whole repertoire of videos there. Check it out because it's pretty dang amazing. And they did, and I'll get, I'm gonna give Full Moon props for that. The the sculpt, the the character, the doll, the everything, perfect, perfection. I loved it. I still love it. Got it. I still got it. It still works. It's perfect. Um, so. Demonic Toys was a thing, and Jack, uh, the Jack in the Box character, which Jack Attack or whatever, I, I don't know if that's his name, uh, he was part of the, the franchise, uh, part of the, the, yeah, he was part of, part of the franchise, and now they're kind of, I, I think what they're doing is they're breaking up the franchises, and they're giving themselves, like, solo things, like, uh, I think Blade got, got his own, um, yeah, Blade has his own solo, uh, uh, Blu-ray, uh, the Blade from, uh, Puppet Master, so yeah, the, Full Moon's doing that. So, yeah, uh, Full Moon, you ripped me off again. Um, no, hey, you know what? I forgive you. No, another year. Another year. Uh, last year was the Evil Bong. year before that was the Puppet Master. This year was the Subspecies. I'm never going to get that Charles Band autograph <laughs> that I want. And I'm not going to buy a Charles Band autograph. I want to get it as part of one of these things. I want it, like, I want you to sign my coffin or sign my, well, not my real coffin. I want, you, I want you to sign the coffin. You know, I, I want you to sign my Evil Bong um, stash box that I, I bought. The, the, I went as far as to buy the special edition Evil Bong stash box. And I still didn't get the autograph. I, I bought the, the two, I, not only did I own the too long uh, crate, uh, that they get a case or whatever that they keep the puppets in. But I also bought the the single box set that, the, that he came out with that wasn't like as elaborate as the the uh the too long case because I was like I don't want to fiddle around with the too long case. It's it's nice, it's cool, it's made out of wood, it's just a cool looking thing. I like it. I don't want to mess around with it. I want to pu keep pulling discs in and out, in and out. So so the following year when they had had the sale, when I bought the the um evil bong set, I actually rebought the Puppet Master franchise again. But I keep looking over here because I know it's in this pile over here. But I don't I, I can't see it. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna start digging through things to try to Is it right? It's right near my feet. Right near my feet. Look at this. Is this right here? Right near my feet? No, that's the Sopranos. Oh, sorry about that. No, I'm not gonna bother around doing it. It's just, if if it is buried so deep, I'm not even gonna grab it. But yeah, I, I did. I I bought I bought it because because I didn't want to fiddle around with that other box set. Hey, next year, better, better luck next year. Hopefully, hopefully there's a Ginger Dead Man one that they they release and and Ban decides he wants to sign that one, and they'll screw me out of that one again, and I'll make another video, and you guys will be here, subscribe to see it. So yes, please do me a favor, please hit the like button, please hit the subscribe button. Like I said, things are coming, good things are coming to this channel, thanks to now having somebody sponsoring this channel, somebody supporting me, somebody that believes in me, I somebody that I I. I can't appreciate more because not like i said when, when somebody does something like that for you it motivates you it motivates you to want to do more it motivates you to want to get out and and make something make it bigger you know what i mean and uh that's what that person just did it would just a, just the cost of a cup of coffee to save a child you know remember those commercials back in the day um that that's what this person just did to me he, he, it, 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 it wasn't like he just dropped a billion dollars on me but what he did was totally enough to do what i need to do in order to be able to give a little back to this channel. So with that said, my friends, thank you so much for viewing. I appreciate you. And I will see you later. You should have saved me some. Goodbye.